welcome to Downloadable. I am your host, Neil Taylor, and this time on the show, we are taking a look at Hearthstone. Yes, this is the new collectible card game from Blizzard based around World of Warcraft, and it's lore, sort of. I'm not a huge lore nerd when it comes to WoW, so I'm probably going to bugger this up, so you'll have to forgive me on that. Essentially, this is a collectible card game along the lines of, say, Magic the Gathering, only a lot less complex and quite frankly a lot more fun. How much fun is this? Well, put it this way, my plans for this week was Downloadable was going to be on WWE uh, 2K14. I've played a little bit of it, but I'm sat here playing Hearthstone because I'm bloody addicted to it. Alright, we're going to jump in and show you the game straight away because there's not much to say about the setup. It's by Blizzard. It's sort of a, uh, it was a small team dedicated to doing something a little bit different from what they'd normally done. And this is what they've come up with. This is available in beta at the, beta at the moment. Uh, you can join by going along to Battle.net and joining, uh, basically just signing up for the beta. Um, it does say at the minute it wasn't uh, outside the US, but obviously I am in the UK and I've got in. And I am kind of very happy that I've got in. We'll do some of the um, store practices later. This is a free-to-play model game, although I don't think that it being free-to-play, uh, there's not going to be much pay to win it in it. Some of this still comes down to just how good you are at this particular type of game. So, first off, I want to point out that you have daily quests. Yay! Today's daily quest to get 40 gold is Priest or Warlock Victory. So I'm going to show you how to set up a card deck. And then we're going to play a game and I'll give you some thoughts. So first off, my collection. Now I've been playing some Mage, some Shaman, some Rogue and some Druid. My Mage deck is pretty good, which I'm kind of disappointed today's daily quest wasn't um, do it with a Mage. But oh well, I suppose it gives me a chance to show you how you make a deck. Now I've leveled most of these characters up so we've got all the basic cards, you know, you will start out with a set of basic cards, get your characters to level 10 either through play or practice, and you'll have basic cards, you will unlock more expert cards by buying decks. Now I'm going to go with, oh, I don't know if I've done this with Warlock, so this is going to be interesting. Priest or Warlock, Priest or Warlock, yeah, fancy the Warlock, Gordan level 2, or Priest level 1. So yeah, I've not been doing much with these characters, I'm going to get spanked. Now you have your Warlock set of cards, and these are pretty much the basic ones. And now we have Neutrals, which can be used by all classes. So you'll have, each class has a, a set of cards that are, that are its own, and you'll also have Neutrals to draw from as well. You can also hit up Crafting Mode, where if you've got enough dust, which I don't because I only have 15 at the minute, you could, in theory, craft a card like that. Unfortunately I don't have enough dust to craft, so, boo can't craft it. But also here's a good way of seeing just how many cards the Warlock deck has on offer for you. Or on the neutrals, because there's stuff you can make in the neutrals. But I can't make anything because I don't have enough dust. Which is a shame, but it's a nice method. Uh, what you do is, uh, if you get a repeat of a uh, expert card, not a basic card, uh, you can break it down into dust and then uh, therefore allows you to craft new ones. Now you get expert cards by opening packs, there's a couple of ways of doing that, but we'll cover that at the end of the video. So, no crafting for me, but a nice little touch. Now, if you're not sure what you're doing with each a particular character, like I'm not particularly sure what I'm doing with the Warlock set, now I could just drag and drop like that, and do that for all, or it does have a suggest card method. So, excuse me, let's have a look here, we've got a choice of three, we have Drain Life, which is deal two damage, restore two health to your hero, Hellfire, Deal 3 damage to all characters, or a battle cry, which is discard a random card. So, as you can see, there's a cost up here, 3, 4, and 2. And we'll get into how this works, but we're going to just quickly build a deck. So we're going to take Hellfire, because nice and... well, take 2 Hellfire. Now, obviously, because I don't have a lot of cards, I'm going to have to repeat myself a lot, I think. I should have taken the Void Walker there. Now, you're only allowed 2 of each card in your hand, so you have to be a little bit careful. Uh, I'm going to take another void worker and now I'm out of void walkers. Taunt battle cry, destroy one of your mana crystals. That doesn't sound good, I'll take corruption. Uh, Shadow Bolt. <laughs> Doubling up really quickly. Power overwhelming. It's a fun one to watch. Another drain life. Again, because I'm lacking in lots of card draw. Well, like a basic cards. I'm, I'm pretty limited here, so you're probably going to see me get spanked when I play a game, which is unfortunate. Okay, I'm going to quickly pick the rest of this deck and we'll cut to a card game. 
Right, well, I said I was going to play a custom warlock, and I recorded that match, but quite frankly, it was terrible and long, so I thought we would try again, and um, hopefully it wouldn't be as bad. So, off we go to find an opponent. I'm going to use my mage deck, which I think is slightly better. I have all the basic cards and then got some nice setup in there. I've been playing it off and on for a couple of days now, so I think I've got the hang of that a little bit better. If you do get the chance to read some of the other captions it has on that little select screen, because that's quite fun. Okay, that should be interesting. You asked for it. I go first. My card selection is not great, to be honest. I'm going to drop the Stormwind, because that's a 7 mana cost and that's going to take a while, so I'd rather have that come out later. Slightly better, but I'm not going to have a go for a while. So, this is the basic board. A nice little setup. Interactive as well, because I can buy that. Well played. I can do that. And I'm going to end my turn, because I can't do anything. I can't do anything to my second turn. <laughs> One shot. Oh, this is going to suck. Getting off to a great start. You know, here's me saying, oh, my mage deck is fantastic. It's really, really good. What can I do? Deal one damage to all enemy minions. I'm going to keep hold of that. And I'm going to cast Fireball. So each hero has a specific hero power. I have a Fireball that does one damage. Shaman has this slightly annoying one of totems. Summon a random totem. Now, there's a couple of totems that you can pull out. One that can attack, one that's taunt, one that heals. If you let them get out of control, it can be very, very painful for you. Especially the healing totem. If you can't focus down that what healing to totem do. quickly, to you are going to suffer. It's a nice little addition. Because um, if you're used to playing something like Magic the Gathering, you have to get so many land cards out to play a creature. Whereas here, it's all about the turns. Each turn, your mana crystal goes up by one. So now we're at three cards, you know, three mana crystals. That's the last me to play a three card. So I'm going to play this. Probably should have put a creature out on the board, to be fair. But that's going to creep him out because I have a secret and he has no idea what it is. So in the fact that you, you rely on these mana crystals instead of uh, pulling land out of you, your deck simplifies the game. But not to its detriment, it makes things a lot faster paced. You know each turn that you're going to go up by what, you know, one crystal, so it allows you to play different cards. Now I've got four, I'm going to play my Sinjin Shield Master, which has Taunt. Taunt's a very useful little yeah. thing. They now have to attack and kill him before they can come after me. That's what Taunt does. It means it's focusing their attacks onto that one creature before they can attack me or any other card that I've got out on the table. Sorry, the downside of trying to narrate this and play the game at the same time, I keep forgetting to press my end turn button, so I do apologise. And because it's a card game, you still... Oh, I still have taunt, but I'm a frog. I now explode. I hate you. Alright, five this turn. What have we got? Hee oh. <laughs> hee. That will annoy people. Okay, for what is five? I think Gorobashi is coming out. Now this one has a different thing here. Uh, every time it takes damage, it gains three to its attack, and it has seven health. He can do three damage to me, or to that if he so chooses. That's two attacks. That's six. So he shouldn't really do that. He should be focusing on me if he's smart. However, I have Fireball. Now I can't use it this turn, but if I fireballed him for one damage, it takes that damage up to five. So. Mage has the real ability to get sort of these enraged creatures really rolling. Yes. And he's gun sensible. And my mirror energy plays. And I get free taunt. That was a good play. <laughs> he's just silenced it, taking away the taunt. I hate you. You are a bastard. Counterspell. Uh, I don't know whether to use that now or play something. I think I should play something. And that's got five health, and I really need something to do that. Um, let's go with the charge. The king. And I'm going to play that. And I still can't kill him. That's kind of annoying. Uh, oh yes. Get that rage up. Here we go, see, now five attack. 
for honor. And I'm forgetting that, hey, I can attack with that character and end my turn, so I apologize for that. This is not the I easiest thing trying to do a damn level and play this game at the same time. I thoroughly enjoyed this game a lot more, say, than Magic the Gathering, because in Magic the Gathering you sort of have to work through, well, I believe you do, I'm not very good at that particular game, you have to work through the creatures on the board before you can attack the player. Here you can attack the player unless obviously they're playing Taunt. So it's simplifying down the idea of how the card game works makes things a lot easier, Someone but still hard to play, still, you know, still takes time to master because you've got all these different strategies you can play with the cards, yet that can go out the window the moment they play something. You know, it's a really great idea. Right, I need to take that flame totem down because that would be bad letting that get out of control. I've got seven, so I'm gonna play that. Free two damage with that. I should have taken the taunt creature down, shouldn't I? That was foolish of me. That was very, very foolish of me. For honor. See what I mean? <laughs> I played this game a fair bit, but still not quite getting the knack of it. <laughs> but I basically so good. You can do two damage. Yeah, you can do one, so you die. I'm going to play that. <laughs> Should really use my fireball, but I'm going to end my turn there. Leave his witch doctor alive. Oh dear. That sucked. Guess what's getting turned into a sheep in my turn? And you're a sheep. Uh gonna play that. What does the future hold? And I'm going to hit you a lot. Who you want me kill? I do like some of the voiceovers like I have a big gun or who you want me kill? I, I, there's a lot of real good thought and effort gone into this, and like I said, it was only a small team that made this game. And what they've done with it, because this is a, a collectible card game, but unlike Magic, uh, I know that Magic the Gathering, um, its online version is just basically a card game, with not a lot put into it uh, for an online arena, for a t you know, for a computer, as in a computer game, really. I know that like Duel of the Planeswalker is, I've been told again, not a huge Magic player, so. You know, that it's sort of a cut down version. How do I want to approach this? I really don't want to do much. Uh, it's going to cost me because that's going to kill anything I attack it with. Because, ah, you win this turn. I'll wait for the war golem to come. That's, you know I'm going to be doing that. You know, this keeps the game simple and flowing at quite a fast pace. Again, not huge into Magic the Gathering, so I could be wrong on some of these things. So uh, you know, don't, you know, if I am, I apologise. If you are a Magic the Gathering fan and played more of it, yeah, I apologise if I've got things wrong. But that game, it feels to be quite complex and there's a lot of stuff to learn in that that it is quite a struggle for a new player. Whereas this is quite simple and easy to pick up, you know. You can instantly work out what a card costs, what its health and attack is. You know, the cards really do a good job of explaining what they do. You know, like here, the battle cry, deal two damage, so he comes on, he's going to hit something for two straight away. Oh, some more taunt. I could have done with that. What you want? I'm going to play my counter spell as well because I've got an abundance of mana because I'm getting low cards, which is not great. I'm going to hit that. I'm going to hit that. I'm going to hit that. And then I'm going to. <laughs> Stuck. I'm going to leave that on the field. There we go. A nice little trade there, and now he's got to worry about my taunt creature and the fact I've got a creature on the board that can hit for seven. It's going to go horribly wrong, isn't it? Because I'm now top decking. I have no cards. I'm relying on the card draw. Okay. Don't be a taunt. Spell power. Okay. But you're thinking uh, ending the turn. Very well. I'm gonna pull that out. Are you ready for this? And I'm gonna ping you. 
Time for killing. And I'm just going to go for a straight charge down. I've got so much damage on the board that it might as well be a charge down. He's got nine health and I can take him next turn. Unless he can clear my board, for the most part, I've kind of got this. I mean, he can take out... Ooh, maybe I haven't. Two, four, six... Oh no, I've got ten without the War Golem, which is a seven. So I think he knows that. I think he's he's now panicking. He's now desperately looking for something. You gotta take the taunt first. Gorobash is out. You can't do no damage. What have you got? What have you got? This is where the game all turns against me. I'm getting cocky. I'm being all big knobbed about it. I'm going to lose. That was a good play. He brought out a taunt. That's what you really needed. Come on, what you got? What have you got? Four cards, eight mana. You must have something you can play. Hmm. What to do? Come on, my audience is waiting. Thank God I played counter spell. That could have been really painful for me then. Because he was going to play a battle cry. Lovely. I love the battle log, by the way. Just hover over it. Give your minions plus three attack this turn, so they would all have got plus three. That's a sensible move. Oh dear. I, I, I feel bad for him now. I'm sorry. Who you want me And we win. Oh, that was fun. You can see if you actually rack up three wins, you get ten gold. Which again helps keep the gold going because you use gold to buy packs. Now we're going to talk about that now. So obviously this is a free-to-play game and they want to make money. Now how they're gonna accomplish this? It's with the store. Now, if you have 100 gold, you can buy one pack. Two packs will cost you 199, seven packs 699, 15, and so forth. So it's quite sensible, and to be fair, it's very reasonable. And watching a lot of games played on YouTube and online, the balance is there. So, you know, you might be at a disadvantage of someone who's got more cards than you, but if you get a lucky turn, a lucky gut break, you can win, so it's not really pay to win, it's just pay to collect cards. And the fact that the option is there to, for you to rack up gold to earn the money to either enter the arena, which I'll talk about in a second, or to buy packs, I like that. Also, you do have the daily quests. Now, I don't know if there should be three a day, but I only seem to have one, and today's daily quest is a priest or a warlock victory, which is 40 gold. So, you, so it's possible for you to, in a couple of games, really knock that up and get to... 100 gold so you can buy a pack. 150 gold, however, lets you enter the arena. At £1.49 or 150 gold. Now, how this works is... You'll, I'll have to come out because I can't stay in there. Uh, basically, you, you pick a class. It'll give you a choice of three. So you might have Mage, Warlock, and Warrior. What you do is pick one of them and you will forge a deck quickly from random cards. Now it's all the cards, it's not necessarily the cards that are in your own personal collection. So you can have the full gamut of cards and the idea there is to, I believe it's achieve nine victories without losing three times. Lose three times, it's over and you're out. And the bigger your win streak is, the better reward you get. So you'll get prize at the end that can consist of gold, dust or card decks. So again, it's a really nice little feature again. The fact that it costs money for you to actually play that or gold, it's a nice choice because you can actually pay real money, or like I said, you can collect the gold and go in next time and play it that way. All right, I apologize if this has been a slightly longer episode of downloadable than you were expecting. Sometimes these card games go quick and sometimes they don't. Thank you very much for watching. You can sign up to the beta of rootbattle.net. Uh, it's not a guarantee that you'll get in straight away, but it can't hurt. Uh, otherwise, keep your eyes open. This will be coming to Mac, to PC, and the iPad as well, which I think is an absolutely cracking idea. And I'm very thankful I don't have an iPad because, good God, this game is cracked to me and I cannot stop playing. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.